So we're speaking about being lifted up by Holy Spirit, getting lifted up into kingdom authority, a higher level of kingdom authority. And this morning I'm going to focus on three keys uh, to kingdom authority. And to speak about kingdom authority, it's a huge thing. It's very important in our lives because we need to understand that there are two kingdoms in this world, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And all people belong to one of the two. We can't belong to both. Amen. We either belong to the kingdom of darkness, where the prince of darkness is the God. He has put up his own throne. He erected his own throne when he rebelled against God before the creation. Lucifer. He said to himself, I want to be like the Most High God. I want to exalt myself to the throne of the Most High, to the throne of the Most High God. Lucifer. So he erected a throne for himself. He made a throne for himself. But the word says he was cast out. He was cast out of heaven, and one third of the angels were cast out with him. So Lucifer became Satan. The enemy of God, the enemy of all creation, whatever God created, the enemy of us, human beings who were created in the image of God. He hates us with a passion. But the Bible says, we, last week we heard, Adam surrendered. Adam, Adam subjected himself to Satan in the Garden of Eden, and he handed over. He handed over himself and, and his offspring. He handed over all of us into the kingdom of darkness. He fell from the kingdom of light into the kingdom of darkness. It was because of Adam. Because of that, we are all subjected to sin, to sickness, disease, and death because of what Adam did. Last week we heard why and what happened. But the good news is that Jesus came, the last Adam, to turn things around to bring us back to God, to reestablish the kingdom of God on earth. Amen? So we are praying, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. As it is in heaven, so it will be on earth. Can you say amen here this morning? So when we, get, we need to get born again. If we get born again, we get translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. It means... That we surrender our lives to Jesus, who is the king of the kingdom of light. Did you know that Jesus is a king? Amen. Amen. He is a king. Who knows Jesus is a king? Amen. Come on, only a few guys here this morning. You need to agree with me here, you see. Not only just two people. I declare Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. I declare him over my life every day. I preach the, the, the gospel to myself every day. I preach, I need to hear the gospel over and over. Amen. I am, I'm, I'm moving out. I'm just moving into the kingdom of, of light. I'm, I'm taking hold of whatever the kingdom of light uh, belongs to me, you know, can, can give to me. Because the kingdom of light, God has given us the kingdom of light. And we need to grow into the kingdom of light. Come out of darkness. Can you say amen? And this is what's all about. Teaching us about authority. Authority is a huge thing. Because the kingdom is all about authority. It's all about authority. The authority of Satan and the authority of Jesus. Now Jesus said that the whole world, the whole world is under the power of the God of the Spirit. The whole world. We can see what is happening in the world. We can see evil. We can see sin, we can see rebellion, we can see destruction, we can see wars and all these kinds of things. The whole world is under, under destruction, destruction. But thank God for Jesus who came to rescue us. Can you say amen? So I'm going to, this morning, I'm going to give three keys or focus on these three keys to help us as children of God to move into more kingdom authority in our lives. But I'm going to start with basic things like last week. And these are 
fundamental things, basic things that we need to understand. And it will help us greatly because without kingdom authority, we are powerless. We are subjected to Satan. We are subjected to what he can throw at us. If he comes with sickness or poverty, whatever somersaults against us, we can do nothing if we don't know our authority in Christ. Amen. And we, we could still be slaves, although we have, been put in, we have been put into the kingdom of God. We've been born into the kingdom of God as sons of God. But we still do not know our kingdom authority. It's like a, like a, a pastor you are, you know, when he was in I give you the keys of my car to you. It would be foolish. But there came a time that I started giving the keys to him so that he could drive the car. Why? Because he became mature. He became more responsible. Authority and responsibility goes hand in hand. You cannot separate them. Cannot be separate them from each other. Can you say amen? So we need to understand this this morning. So it's all about authority, kingdom authority. We need kingdom authority in these days because the world is coming to an end. I don't think I need to tell you that. The world is coming to an end. This world is coming to an end. We are coming to the end of the church age. We're coming to the beginning of the kingdom of God that's going to be revealed on the planet. Jesus is going to come back as, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can you say amen? And he's going to stop and he's going to destroy the works of the devil on the planet. And he's going to, to uh, uh, restore. Say restore. He's going to recreate. Amen. And he's going to take up, set up his kingdom on the earth. Amen. And we are going to be part of that. If we belong to Jesus, we'll be part of his kingdom. Amen. We're going to rule with him. We're going to rule the nations. Because there are going to be nations again. Yes. You know, only a few will, 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 will be left over after the tribulation. But w people will be, begin to, to uh, populate the earth again. And the, the word says we are going to rule with Jesus. The church is going to rule with Jesus. Okay. Are you ready this morning? So there are three things this morning that I want to focus on. The first one is recognize. The second one is respect. And the third one is receive. Recognize, respect, and receive. Okay, let's read here in the book of Matthew 8, verse 5 to 8. Speaking about Jesus now, when he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. Wow. Wow. And then here from verse 9 it says, For I too am a man under authority. Say under authority. Who knows that we are all supposed to be under authority? Can I ask you that question again? Who knows that we are all supposed to be under authority? It is a fact. We are all under authority. He said, I am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. Wonderful what happened here. Number one is to recognize Jesus when you see him. To recognize Jesus when you see him. And I'm not speaking about 2,000 years ago. I'm speaking. Who knows that Jesus is alive? He rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. Look to somebody next to you and say to him, I see Jesus. I see Jesus in you. To recognize Jesus when you see him. This is the first key, is to recognize. The first key is to recognize Jesus. I'm going to speak about that. See, he's revealed to us. And through us, 
by Holy Spirit. He's revealed to us and through us by Holy Spirit. It is only Holy Spirit that can reveal Jesus to us so that we can recognize Him and He's revealed to us and He's also revealed through us. Who knows that God wants to reveal Jesus through the church in the world? Amen. Now, let me just help you here. After the resurrection, there were men, two men, they were on their way to a place called Emos, which means hot spring. It's a hot spring. In Africa, it's a warm bron. It was a plank where our warm bron was. It means hot spring. So they were on their way there. It was after Jesus was resurrected, but it was like, you know, right in the beginning, Jesus was beginning to reveal himself to those who believed in him. And so he started walking with them. But they did not recognize him. The word says they did not recognize him. They didn't know it was Jesus in his glorified body because he was resurrected. So, and then Jesus started asking them questions about what's going on in Jerusalem. What's this commotion, all this commotion going on? And so they said, who are you? What, stranger, don't you know what happened in Jerusalem? And they started telling her about Jesus and the crucifixion. And then Jesus said to them, you know, foolish man, let me explain to you. And he started opening up. He started teaching them the word. He started teaching them about the prophets and the law and everything of the Old Testament. And he started teaching them about himself as they were walking and going to Emos. And then what happened when they got to Emos, Jesus made if he, he wanted to go further. But they said, no, come in with us. Come and, come and stay with us. Come and dine with us. They, were, they wanted him to with. You see, they, they still did not recognize him. But something, something happened. Something happened when Jesus spoke to them. And he was opening up their minds. The Bible said he was opening up their minds. Why? Because you see, the blindness is not, is not with our physical eyes. The blindness is in our minds. Can you say amen? Because we can't recognize Jesus because of our spiritual blindness. So what happened while they were busy eating with Jesus? All of a sudden, the Bible says their eyes opened, not their physical eyes, and they recognized Him. They recognized Him. They realized that He is the crucified Christ. He is the resurrected Christ. And then the Bible says He vanished from them. Amen. So, it begins, divine authority, kingdom authority begins by recognizing Jesus. By seeing Jesus, not with our physical eyes, but with our spiritual eyes. Recognizing Him. Getting the revelation of who He is. That revelation of who He is. Can you say amen here this morning? And then it was, they were saying to each other, yeah, now we understand. While we were walking our hearts became like burning inside of us, burning inside of us. You see, Jesus wants us to be, He wants us to be on fire for Him. He wants our love to be, He wants our hearts to be burning for Him. When Jesus speaks, when we recognize Him, we, our hearts become like on fire. It's like that hot spring. Something that, that hot spring also means healing. It, hot spring, they used hot springs to get healing. All kinds of, from all kinds of uh, physical uh, but uh, things, ailments and so on. They got healing by sitting in the, those hot baths and so on. But when Jesus, this is what happened to them. While he was speaking to them, they heard the word. And what happened to them? Their hearts became burning hot inside of them, burning hot. You see, when we recognize Jesus, when we know who he is, our hearts will become burning with love, burning with compassion. We get inspired by Jesus. Can you say amen? Listen, I'm, I'm saying this to you this morning because many people have lost their zeal. Maybe not here, but many Christians have lost their zeal. They've lost their passion for Jesus. They've lost their first love for Jesus. Their hearts are not on fire for Jesus. They've not got, the, they've not got that, that burning love for Jesus. We mustn't lose that. Amen? 
Why? Because we need, we need to recognize Him more and more and more. Every day, we need to recognize Jesus. We need to, to know who He is. The Apostle Paul said, I've, I've uh, reckoned everything has done. I've reckoned everything has done. Everything in this world, I've reckoned has done to gain Christ Jesus, to know Him. The centurion recognized the authority of Jesus. Now you need to think about this man. He was a centurion of the mightiest army on the planet, the Roman army. He was, he was a great man. He was in charge of at least 100 men. And he, he had a great army. He was part of a great army. The Bible says that this man came to Jesus because of his servant that was paralyzed. So, obviously, this man recognized authority because he, was, he said to Jesus, Jesus, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. Only speak a word and my servant will be healed. This man knew something about authority. Because he was in a position of authority. He understood how authority works. So what did he recognize? He recognized the authority of Jesus. And he said, Lord, only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Because I'm a man under authority. And I say to this one, go there. And he goes. And I say to that one, come here. And he comes. I, 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 I can give commands. I'm under authority, but I also have men under me, under my authority. So Lord, what he was saying, Jesus... I recognize your authority. So what I'm saying, I just speak a word and the miracle will take place. See, this is what happens in us. When we begin to recognize the authority of Jesus, we will gain victory over sickness and disease. We will gain victory over the evil one. Can you say amen? We will gain victory over the things of this world because the authority of Jesus is high above everything in this world. His authority is greater than every authority in this world. There's no authority greater than His authority. This is just how it is. Wouldn't it be wonderful to only recognize Jesus in each other rather than Adam? I'm asking a question here this morning. Just think about this. Wouldn't it be wonderful to recognize Jesus, only Jesus, in each other rather than Adam. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Did you know Jesus lives in us? Yeah, of course he lives in us. But we recognize Adam, but not Jesus. Or let me, say, let me put it this way. Let me rather put it this way. It's easier for us to see Adam and other people. And then we condemn them. But it's more difficult to see Jesus in them. Amen. Amen. Now, let me give you a scripture here this morning and see what the Bible says. Because in this season that we are in now, things must change. Say to somebody, things must change. If we want to be united, and uh, I said yesterday, I said to the leaders that were here, well, not I didn't speak to them, I spoke to Pastor Marcel and said, uh, what I've experienced yesterday was the, the unity in the leadership, like I've never experienced before. Just a powerful unity. And I know unity is now important. Like the Lord showed to me many years ago, He gave me those, the vision about hope, faith, and love. And we've, we've come into that phase now of love, where we will be united in love. We've been severely tested, faith, purified. Amen. Amen. We were tested, purified. Our faith was purified, tested. But now we're into that last phase, which the, we will get one. We'll become one in love. One in love. Amen. How will we become one in love? When we begin to see Jesus in each other. When we be begin to love each other because of Jesus. Can you say amen? We love Jesus. I want to love Jesus in my wife. And she wants to love Jesus in me. Amen. I want to love Jesus in my brother. I want to love Jesus in my sister. Can you say amen? The word says here in 2 Corinthians 5. So from now on. We recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Messiah according to the flesh. Yet now we no longer know him this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, he is a new creation. Though things have passed away, 
Behold, all things have become new. Come on. There's something of Jesus in all of us. If we are born again, something has changed inside of us. We have received the Spirit of Christ. We have received the gift of the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. Jesus said something so powerful. He said, by this, the world will know that you are my disciples when you have love one for another. You see, the world is looking for Jesus, the true Jesus. The world hates. They hate. The world hates the religious Jesus. Amen? That the church is portrayed. The world is looking for the true Jesus, the true Jesus that can come and help them, can rescue them from this world. The world is waiting to see the true Jesus. You know how the world is going to see the true Jesus? When we have love for one another, the world will know that we are disciples of Christ. Because there's something missing in the world. True love is missing in the world. There's no love in the world. But the church, the church has the love of Jesus. And the world needs to see the love of Jesus. Amen. So let's carry on. Let's go to the next one. Here's a very important point. I'm going to spend some time here. I'm going to cover some things here. Respect and honor Jesus for who he is. Respect. Say respect. Respect and honor. Respect and honor. See, the centurion humbled himself. He honored and respected Jesus. He recognized Jesus, but it didn't stop there. He also respected Jesus for who he is, who he, who he was, who he saw Jesus to be. He respected him and he honored him. He said to him, now just think about this. This man was a centurion. He was not a, just a, like a last jack in the army. He, was, he must have been some officer in the army. He had a great position. In the greatest army, maybe he had good reason to be proudful, but he wasn't. He humbled himself. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. I'm not worthy. So he lowered himself under Jesus. He humbled himself under Jesus. Now, this is a very important key in receiving kingdom authority, is to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. If we want to overcome the devil, the word says, we must submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Amen. What do we see in the world today? We see the spirit of Antichrist already working in the world. Rebellion. Lawlessness, disrespect, slander, hatred, people tearing each other down. See, but we are not of this world. We are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. But what are we seeing in the world? We are seeing the influence of the spirit of Antichrist in this world. Respect is a great thing in the kingdom of God. Honoring is a great thing in the kingdom of God. It is, it is a key. And we have to, as children of God, we need to understand this. It's so important. That's why Jesus said, I've, I've, not, find, I've not find such a great faith in Israel as this man's faith. Because this man understood authority. He understood how, how the kingdom worked, even though he was not part of the kingdom. And he respected Jesus. He gave honor to Jesus because he realized that Jesus must have some some. Uh, authority because what Jesus was doing there was there was a witness going out testimony going out about Jesus how people got healed how people got delivered from the devil and this man may may be thought by himself Jesus must be some somebody very very authoritative he must be somebody in a very high position even higher than what I am because I can't heal people. I've got a hundred soldiers under me. I've got, I'm part of a mighty army. But I can't raise people from the dead. I can't cast out demons. So this man must be high in authority. He's got some, some authority. 
So he humbled himself. Can I give you a key here this morning? If you want to grow in kingdom authority, you need to humble yourself. Amen. Amen. Respect is a great thing in the kingdom of God. A man who cannot ha humble himself, a man who cannot submit under authority, opens himself up for a, Luc for a Lucifer spirit. Are you listening to what I'm saying? A man who is not able to submit himself under authority is opening himself up for the Lucifer spirit. He's giving place to the devil to bring rebellion in his life. Such a man, once the devil gets a foothold in his, in his heart, Becomes, he becomes self-righteous. He begins to exalt himself. It's happening. Listen, it's happening. It's even happening with, with leaders in the church. It's happening with pastors. And I'm not out to condemn pastors or criticize pastors, expose pastors. Because I know that leaders have got a battle of their own. But leaders need to be humble. Can you say amen? amen. Leaders need to be humble. Otherwise, the devil will get a foothold in us. If we read in the book of uh, Proverbs 18, verse 1, the Bible says, a man who isolates himself, a man, listen, I'm giving you principles, a man who isolates himself, seeks his own desire. He rages against all sound judgment. Exactly what, Jesus, what, what, uh, what Lucifer did. He isolated himself. And this is what, uh, when a Lucifer spirit begins to take hold of a person's heart, a man's heart, I'm speaking about men, I'll speak about women now. That okay, man? Is that okay, Owens? Let me understand him English for more. I'm dealing here with a very, very. Um, there's a war going on because we have to deal with this. There's a spiritual battle going on. I have to deal with this right now, here in the beginning. Because let me say to you, the fear of the Lord is coming back to the church. And if we are not, if we don't understand spiritual authority, we are in trouble. Because the same anointing, the same presence that blesses us can also kill us. Amen. Go and read the book of Acts. God is a holy God. Can you say amen? He's a holy God. And we need to understand His authority. We need to understand who God is. We need to understand His holiness. Things are going to change. In the past, in the past season, people could say things and they would get away with it. But not in this season now. The Lord is going to judge people. He's going to bring His judgment upon people. I'm not speaking about the world. I'm speaking about people in the church. It's happening. We see pastors fall away. There's a pastor in, in our, in our uh, network. He's a very well-known prophet. He has prophesied to the president. He has prophesied to, to, uh, to me. He has prophesied to other people, other leaders, and so on. But he's, he's, he fell. He fell into alcohol and gambling, things like that. And leaders went to speak to him, tried to bring him back to the Lord. But he's unrepented. Why? Because Lucifer got a stronghold in his heart. See, this is what happens when, when, when we do not humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves every day. Can you say amen? amen. I've got the fear of the Lord. I, I'm under Pastor Harold's authority. So I've, I'll never open my, wife, my mouth and say any bad thing about him. I'll never say anything bad thing against him because I'm under his authority. 
I need to respect the authority that God has placed over my life. Can you say amen? So we are all under authority, some spiritual authority, and we need to, to understand how the kingdom of, of God works. You can't just say loose things, because we will be judged by our words. We will be judged by our words. I'm not condemning this past. I'm not condemning this leader, because he has gone through a very difficult time and so on. But what we need to realize, the leaders need to be accountable to each other. They need to be, they need to be surrounded by other leaders. They cannot be lone rangers. Amen? Because the devil will get them. Bring them down. This is the thing. There's something like a Lucifer spirit. When a Lucifer spirit comes into a man, he becomes rebellious. He becomes, he becomes stubborn. You can't teach him anything. He's stubborn. He knows everything. Amen? And he will do the things his way. I want it my way. So let's see for spirit. There are some other things that I haven't got time now to speak about that. The, the characteristic of a Lucifer spirit, he wants to be close to the leader. He wants to be close to the leader. He desires a position rather than a responsibility. He re desires the authority, but he, but he doesn't want to take the responsibility. Is it okay if I speak to you like that this morning? Amen. You are mature enough to handle it this morning. Amen. Amen. So what is the Lord's answer to this leader, a leader like that? Is to humble yourself. Humble yourself. Submit yourself to God. Now sometimes when a leader has gone to that place, he needs to get to that point where he can recognize what has happened. Like the, like the, uh, the lost son in the pigsty. He came to himself. And what happened? He repented. Because that's the only way back to God is to repent. Say to somebody, we need to repent of ungodly things in our lives. This, the young man repented. He looked at himself. Now, I'm thinking of the pastor that has now fallen away. He lost his, he lost his ministry. He lost his wife. He's losing his house. Why? And all he needs to do is to repent. But he can't. He's still, he's still in the grip of a Lucifer spirit. And you know, the only way he's going to come out of that now is if people pray for him. People call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, have mercy on him. Bring light into him. The Holy Spirit can break through. And I know that Lord is merciful and gracious. Can you say amen? amen. He's the God of second chance. Amen. And I'm not speaking down on any pastor or any leader. But I'm saying, the word says, you that stand, be careful, lest you fall. We can all fall. No leader is perfect. Leaders make mistakes. That's why we need to be humble. Like this centurion. This man was different from Naaman. Naaman came to Elisha, you know, and he wanted Elisha to heal him from his uh, leprosy. And then Elisha sent his servant and said, go and tell him he must go and bath in the, in the Jordan. And what did Naaman do? He became angry. He said, he said, you know, I thought the man of God is going to wave his hand over my head, you know, and I'm going to be healed. Why? Because he was full of himself. He was puffed up with pride. He was in a high position also military-wise. Instead of just humbling himself. So the Lord knows how to humble people. So let's see, you go and jump in the Jordan River. And for him, that was like an Afrikaans, you know, a vernedering. Amen. The Lord knows how to humble us. And he'll take us to the place of... What's vernedering? Last month. What? This grace. You take us to the place of disgrace, where we get disgraced. Because He loves us. He wants us to come back to Him. Amen. He wants us to return to Him. But he's not, going to, he's not going to allow us to have kingdom authority if our hearts are full of uh, uh, disrespect, full of rebellion, full of, you know, I do it my way. No, no. He wants us to be humble, not full of pride. I'm speaking to a man. I'm going to speak to ladies now. Men first and then women. Is that okay? Men first and then women. We are all, we are all under attack from the God of this world. 
We all need to guard our hearts. We all need to protect our hearts because we are in a spiritual battle for our souls. Amen. Amen. A woman that cannot submit herself under authority opens herself for the Jezebel spirit. We all know the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit is a witchcraft spirit. Like in the time of Ahab, his kingdom became an illegitimate kingdom. The Jezebel spirit will, will erect an illegitimate authority. And she will bring in Baal worship. She will bring in idolatry. She will take you away from the Holy Spirit and she will that this Jezebel spirit is like a copycat of the Holy Spirit I don't know the right English word even the gifts she will copy the gifts and it's very difficult to discern but it's a controlling spirit taking control and beginning to tear down tear down divine authority tear down true authority tear down legitimate authority when a woman let me tell you why this happens. It's all because of wounds in our lives. A man is a man is he is a he is a subject to an attack of a Lucifer spirit if there are wounds in his heart. A woman is subject to attacks from a Jezebel spirit if there are wounds in their hearts. Can you say amen? Wounds. What do we do with our wounds? We're, we're all getting wounded because we are in the war. We need to bring our wounds to Jesus. We need to get our wounds to be changed into scars. Come on. Say to somebody, we need to change our wounds into scars. The Holy Spirit will change our wounds into scars. But we can't walk around with wounds in our lives. Amen. Jesus, the wounds of Jesus became scars. Jesus is not walking around with, with wounds. He's walking around with scars. He's got the scars, but he has, he has given forgiveness. Can you say amen? amen? We need to get our hearts clean from wounds. We need to get scars, not wounds anymore. You see, a scar, I'm sure all of you, who's got a scar here? Okay. All of us have got scars in our bodies. Now, if you've got a scar in your body, you can touch it. You can pinch it. It's not painful anymore. It's healed. Can you say amen? amen? Now, when a woman has got wounds in her heart, it's like a man. He will, the man will attract the Lucifer spirit, but the woman will attract the Jezebel spirit. The Jezebel spirit, the god of Jezebel is called Baal. It's the god of flies. Flies will come. You know, a wound will attract flies. So what happens... When a woman comes under a Jezebel spirit, she will begin to come against her husband's authority. She will undermine her husband's authority in the home. He will lose his authority, and these children will become rebellious. The children will become rebellious. And what happens then? Sickness will come in. Disease will come in. All kinds of sin will come into the home. And the same in the church. <coughs> When the Jezebel spirit gets control over a church, the whole church becomes infested by the Jezebel spirit, by demons coming in. So it's a, it's, a, it's a spiritual war for the leadership to keep out the Jezebel spirit in this time because this is the prevailing spirit that is now ruling in this world. But God is in control because God said that Elijah will come. Can you say amen? And Elijah's job was to get rid of Jezebel, to overthrow Jezebel, to bring down that spirit. So this is what's going to happen in this season. The Elijah spirit, it's the Holy Spirit working in the fire and power of Elijah, will come into the church. And the Jezebel spirit is going to be cast down. Can you say amen? amen. Families are going to be restored. Churches will be restored. Those churches that are, that are under the authority of the kingdom of God will be restored. How does a woman come out of the control of a Jezebel spirit? Same way as a man need to repent. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I divorce myself from that spirit. There needs to be a divorce. Can you say amen? amen. 
There needs to be a divorce. A man has to divorce himself from a Lucifer spirit. Sometimes there are soul ties. There are many people who carry ungodly soul ties. There are, they are, they, they are ungodly soul ties connected to their souls. You need to cut those soul ties off. Ungodly soul ties. Cut them off. Divorce yourself from the, those soul ties. Can you say amen here? Because you, those soul ties will pull you in. If you are connected to a, a Jezebel, that thing will pull you in. It can destroy your life. Break from it. Here in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 12, we read, We beg you, our brothers and sisters, to pay proper respect to those who work among you, who guide and instruct you in the Christian life. Treat them with the greatest respect and love because of the work they do. Be at peace among yourselves. I just saw that there's a man of, a man of preacher, let me just say, preacher in America, He's got probably one of the largest churches in America. America is a bad place. What is going on in America now is just astonishing what is happening there. There's a spiritual war like you've never seen in your life. And the outcome is going to determine even the, the, the course of the planet. But this pastor, and I'm not approving of him or I'm not disapproving. I'm just saying this to you. What is happening? Pastors are under... Tremendous spiritual attack. Even now in South Africa, we were meeting with some pastors here the other day. They were crying. They, they, there's something happening in churches. Church members are attacking the spiritual leaders. They are they're coming against the pastors. They're tearing down their authority. They're trying to expose the pastors for evil and all these kinds of things. Let me tell you, there are bad pastors. There are wolves. But most pastors, are, they've got a pure heart. Their heart is to help God's people. They've got a shepherd's heart. They, want, they are care, caring for God's people. Can you say amen here this morning? You know, but the devil has come in to many churches. Jezebel, Lucifer, and tearing churches apart. Like I said, this pastor here, in, I'm not going to say where, but, you know, in South Africa, his church, they've closed his church now. This pastor in America, I just saw, I didn't even look at it. He went to, he went to a party of Lady Gaga. Listen to that. Who's Lady Gaga? Okay, but other pastors are tearing him down because he went to a party of Lady Gaga. Well, let me tell you, Jesus went to, you know, he went to, sit with a man that was totally demonized. My wife just told me a little bit about Lady Gaga. I don't know who Lady Gaga, Gaga is, but she told me she knows more than I do. So I said, okay, she, she's in trouble. But maybe, I don't know. She's in trouble. And maybe that pastor is full of the love of Jesus, and he wants to save her. Maybe he has prayed for her. Maybe he's reaching out to her. I don't, you know, people can easily say, yeah, that pastor is, is going to a party of Lady Gaga. But why is he going there? Maybe he's just, he wants to shine his light there. Maybe he loves her so much like Jesus loves her. He wants to get her out. He's, doesn't mean he wants to go and drink with her. Doesn't mean he wants to go ro roll around in the mud like she's doing. He wants to get her saved. He said, pastor, but pastors don't belong there. Who says who? If you know who you are in Christ, you can step in there. Because you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. You can step into that whole house. You're not going to partake in the sin. But you're going to rescue people from, the, from hell. You need the love of Jesus inside of you. Not condemnation. We are easy to condemn because we see Adam. Don't condemn. Let's love. Let's show the love to the world. What are they going to say? And I can tell you, you know, these pastors are criticizing him. I don't know the full story, but I say this. Be careful before you criticize, because you don't know. Maybe God sent him there. Don't tear him down. Because maybe you are tearing down the authority of God. I'm speaking to leaders as well.
pastor I'm speaking about here in South Africa, he started drinking eight years ago, taking a sip of wine, sip of wine, sip of wine. Let me say to you, the devil knows our weaknesses. He knows our weak spots. I came out of that. For me to go and have to take some, to become a sipping saint, I'll be in trouble. I'll, I'll be in trouble. Can you say amen? So for me, it's like the Lord rescued me from that. He set me free from that. But I'm not going to be judgmental for somebody that's taking a glass of wine. Because there are people that are, they've got self-control. They're not, they're not drunkards. But unfortunately, this pastor has gone from a, taking a bit of wine here and there, and now he's at a place where he drinks two bottles of wine every day. He's an alcoholic now. Why? Because he played with the enemy, and he's, the enemy has pulled him back now. And now, you know, he's a, he's a victim of Lucifer. It's a sad thing. And I'm not condemning, but heart goes out to him. I feel sorry for him. And pastors have reached out to him to help him try and get out of that. But he's unrepentant. So one, once a person is unrepentant, the, the Lord cannot help such a person until he gets to that place where he's repentant. Can you say amen? So what am I saying here this morning? I'm saying... What the word says, let us respect authority. Let us not just tear down authority. Even the cell leader has got authority. He has got delegated authority. Don't speak against the, the cell leader. The cell leader loves the sheep. He wants to give love. He wants to help the sheep. Can you say amen? Even the group shepherd, he's, he's got authority. He's got delegated authority. Don't speak against him. He's, he's not perfect yet. He's going to be perfect one day. Amen. As long as he serves the Lord, as long as he's obedient to God, God is going to honor him. God is going to increase his anointing upon his life. As long as he loves Jesus, he may be still imperfect. He does some things wrong. He says some things wrong. Don't just judge him. Don't tear him down. Don't criticize him. He's not perfect yet. Leaders make mistakes. Let's give grace to leaders. The Bible says, let us respect. This is what the Bible says. We beg you, our brothers and sisters, to pay proper respect to those who work among you. Proper respect. Leaders are extensions of the authority of Jesus. Proper respect to those who work among you, who guide and instruct you in the Christian life. Treat them with the greatest respect and love because of the work they do. Be at peace among yourselves. Do we want peace in this house? Amen. Want God's peace? Do we want divine authority in this house? Amen. Let me say to you something this morning. It's such an important thing. If there's divine authority in a house like this, cancer cannot stand. Amen. God heals the cancer. Blindness will not stand. God heals it. Because there's nothing, no sickness, no disease, no nothing that can stand in front of divine authority. That can Listen, if divine authority is in the house, there's power. That's why the enemy will try and work to tear down divine authority. Okay. Number three, we're finishing off here. Receive. Kingdom authority. Receive kingdom authority. It's what the, the centurion, before he received healing for his servant, he, he received kingdom authority first. He recognized the authority of Jesus. Healing was a fruit. It was a result of his knowledge or understanding or his revelation of the kingdom authority of Jesus. See, when you see kingdom authority, if I... If I if I need to get a, a word or a, can I say, get somebody to pray for me, I will go to my authority, who is Pastor Harold. When I had a struggle with cancer 10 years ago, I went to Pastor Harold, prayed for me. Now, it was important for me to be in a right standing with him because you cannot receive anything from your authority unless you are in a right standing relationship with him. Can you say amen? This is how it works. And this centurion received healing for his servant. Why? Because he received kingdom authority. 
See, Nazareth, where Jesus grew up, could not receive the full blessing of kingdom authority. Why? First of all, they didn't recognize him as the Son of God, as the Messiah, as the anointed one. They only saw the boy that grew up in Nazareth. They were familiar with him. So familiarity, that's the right word. Familiarity. Familiarity is a bad thing in the church. So they didn't recognize Jesus' authority, and they, they basically disrespected Jesus. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to throw him down the cliff because he said, he, he, he quoted the scripture and said, this is what the word says about me. I said, no ways. We're going to kill you, throw you off the cliff. The Bible says Jesus just walked out of Nazareth. And I can't see any place in the Bible where he ever went back to Nazareth. Listen, let me say to you, I'm, this is a serious thing I'm saying now. Are you listening now? Maybe it's going to come a bit, just receive it with love. We cannot fool around where we are. We cannot fool around. We cannot be ignorant now any longer. Amen? Come on, are you listening to me? We cannot fool around. We cannot be ignorant. We cannot tolerate things of the past season. Leaders need to be committed. Amen? The sheep needs to be committed. We need to be serious with our souls and our salvation. We need to keep the devil out. Say to somebody, we need to keep the devil out. Amen. And then we're going to have victory. We're going to receive the kingdom authority. And what happens then? We become carriers of the kingdom. Carriers of kingdom authority. This is what God wants us. He wants us to be carriers of the kingdom authority. We're going to close here. I want to read from <coughs> this translation, the TLV. Matthew 28 verse 18 says, And Jeshua came up to them and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. How much authority? Who has got all authority? Jesus. Jesus. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then immediately after that, he said, go therefore. What he did, he said, I'm giving you authority. Go therefore in my authority and make disciples of all nations. God wants disciples. Can you say amen? He wants sons and daughters. Immersing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Ruach HaKodesh. I like that word for the Holy Spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh. And maybe we're going to sing that song. It's your breath in my lungs. This like, Ruach means breath. It speaks of the, the breath of God. If you are born again, you've got the breath of God in your lungs. Can you say amen? You've got the life of God inside of you. You are born again by the Spirit of God. Let's stand up. Praise God.